So you decided to leave the ICC. Some of the questions you got to consider. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 16, the Bible says, Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. You got to ask yourself, why do you want to leave the ICC? Is it because you're taking a stand for righteousness to do what is right according to God's word? Or are you trying to just look for a reason so that you can go back to your life of sin without having a guilty conscience? If that's the case, you found the wrong videos, you found the wrong guy, and don't use my videos as a reason for you to turn back to a life of sin. Do not use freedom in Christ as a cover up for evil. A couple questions you might come across. Number one, where will I go? You know, when talking to individuals that are part of the ICC, this is a common expression that I hear, a fear of taking a stand for righteousness because the question comes is, where would I go? Let me ask you, in any of your decision making, when it comes to the word of God, do you ever base your decision making on what if? Do you have to know the whole story? Do you have to know everything before your baptism or before you obey a scripture? Or do you simply live by faith to say, I'm going to do whatever God says for me to do and I'm gonna let him handle the details. Guys, it's not about where will I go, it's where will the Spirit lead me? Take a look at Acts chapter eight. It's when the Ethiopian eunuch gets baptized by Philip. The Bible says in verse 39 that when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. And the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Not only is the eunuch alone in this passage in the middle of the desert, but Philip is also taken to be alone. And that's okay, because they were led by the Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the name of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Now the Bible says that by faith, Moses left Egypt at 40 years old. That when he left all the Israelites behind, it was by faith to go into the desert, to spend time with God, to be trained as a shepherd. And then God brought him back to also set the other Israelites free from captivity. Where would I go? Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Go spend time with God. You know, another question we have to ask ourselves is, will I be a fall away from God? The Ethiopian eunuch went on his way in the desert rejoicing. Why? Because he was still close to God. Philip was taken by the Holy Spirit away to another city, and yet he was close to God. Moses left the Israelites in Egypt and went into the desert by faith close to God. You see, if you're a fall away from God because you leave the ICC, that's up to you. And the question I pose, were you converted to Christ or were you converted to an organization? Can I be saved outside of the International Christian Church? Actually, chapter 4 and verse 10. Then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. You see, the Bible teaches that it's the name of Christ that we can be saved. So if you leave an organization such as the ICC, of course you can be saved as long as you are still in Christ. John chapter 10 and verse 9, listen to what Jesus says about the sheep and him being the good shepherd. Jesus says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. In some translations or some manuscripts, chapter 10, verse nine is translated like this. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be kept safe. You see, when you come through Christ, you will be kept safe 
by Christ. And so if you leave the ICC and you've been converted to Christ, you will still be kept safe for you will then go out and find pasture. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20, Jesus says, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Will you lose all your relationships? I don't know, but you'll lose some of them and there's pain there. Some of the relationships that you'll lose is because people are scared and they're following the doctrine of man. Some people will unfriend you because it's just too painful to see the truths of what you're bringing up. Another question many people ask is, will I be marked? In Romans chapter 16, verse 17, when it's talking about a marking, it's talking about people who are putting teachings in your path that pull you away from the teachings of the scriptures. And why? It's to serve their own appetites, not the Lord Christ. So you got to ask yourself, are you determined to follow the scriptures? Or are you serving your own appetite? If you're serving your own appetite and you're pulling away people from the doctrines of the Bible, then yes, you could get marked. But if you're not pulling people away from Jesus and the word of God towards your own appetite, then there's no reason why you would get marked. Sadly though, in the ICC, you could get marked not because of you pulling people away from Christ, but simply because they don't want people to know of the truths that you're willing to bring to light. They don't want people to ask questions. They don't want people to have knowledge in certain areas. And so they will mark you to get people to not even hear your side of the story. Will you be marked? Possibly. If they're gonna lose people by marking you, they won't. If they can stop people from listening to you by marking you, they will. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 12. In fact, every one of you who live a godly life in Christ Jesus, will be persecuted. So if you get marked for taking a stand for Christ, well, you've just earned persecution for righteousness. Third John, we find out the heart or the spirit of those who will mark somebody for taking a stand for righteousness against an organization. Verse nine, he says, I wrote to the church, but Diotrophus, who loves to be first, will not welcome us. So when I come, I will call attention to what he is doing, spreading malicious nonsense about us. Not satisfied with that, he even refuses to welcome other believers. He also stops those who want to do so and puts them out of the church. The spirit of Diotrophus was one that they wanted to be in control. So they were willing to put people out of the church, willing to stop fellowship with believers by spreading malicious nonsense about other Christians. You see, if somebody in your church that's leading your fellowship has the spirit of diatrophus, well, then you will be marked. You know, in John chapter 12, you're thinking about leaving the ICC for righteousness. Consider this scripture. At the same time, many even among the leaders believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue. For they loved human praise more than praise from God. You know, if you're thinking about leaving the ICC for righteousness, you really have to count the cost. Are you willing <laughs> to take a stand even if you're kicked out of this fellowship? Even if you're kicked out because you love the praises from God more than any of the praises from man? You know, maybe you're doubting about taking a stand for righteousness and leaving the ICC. Consider Matthew 15. In verse 6, he says, Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. We study the Bible with a lot of people and we call them to leave organizations over one doctrine that goes against the scriptures. Are you willing to practice what you preach? If there's one doctrine that goes against the holy scriptures, are you willing to take a stand on that? To say, I refuse to be a hypocrite. I refuse to nullify the word of God. I refuse to love the praises of men more than the praises of God. I will take my stand. I will follow the Holy Spirit. I will follow the Holy Scriptures. 
Jesus is Lord and he's with me everywhere I go. The Spirit will guide me and teach me and direct me and bring me into other fellowships. But I'm going to let the Holy Spirit guide my life. I'm going to live by faith and not by sight. Because I understand that the kingdom of God is not here or there. It is not a building. It is not a place. It's not an organization. It's among y'all and anybody who has the Holy Spirit, who has Christ. Not only are they with Christ, but they have freedom. When you make this decision, and maybe you take your stand, you might get some calls. Certain leaders will reach out to you that maybe you haven't spoke to in years. And they'll try to convince you to not leave the ICC because they try to convince you that if you leave the ICC, you're leaving God. Another tactic that these individuals will use is they try to draw men to themselves. And that exposes who they are. Instead of listening to your concerns and listening to the scriptures that you're bringing to light, of where the ICC might be contradicting itself or being hypocrites. Instead of saying, hey, let's study this out. Let's look at the scriptures together. They want to draw men after themselves by saying things like, well, come over to my ministry. We're not doing things like that. We're awesome over here. Everything is awesome in my ministry. And why are they doing this? You see, Paul helps us understand that in Acts chapter 20, that there's going to be savage wolves that come in amongst the flock to You see, when you see these truths and you take a stand, people will come in and try to distort the truth to draw individuals after themselves. It'll leave you feeling like maybe you're crazy looking at these facts and looking at these scriptures. Sometimes it's like putting a puzzle together in the dark. You're not crazy. Spend time in the word of God. And if things become clear from the word of God, know that you're making the right decision. It's only when you start talking to individuals who distort the truth by drawing men after themselves that things get fuzzy. They get confusing. And remember who the author of confusion is. It's not the Holy Spirit. You see, the issue is not just an individual, though there are many individuals to blame. The issue is the root, the doctrine. And there are many false doctrines in the ICC that is producing the fruit that you are experiencing. When you don't allow Jesus to be your central leader, and you have a man fulfilling those shoes, you will have all types of fruit that disagree with the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 12 and verse 15, Jesus says to be on your guard against all kinds of greed because men have a greed for power, control, and money because they have greed for titles, because they have a greed for popularity, Because they have a greed for wanting others to praise them. You see all distorted things. Be on your guard towards those who have lengthy prayers, who wear long robes, who sit at the seat of honor at the banquets. Be wary of those who put their walk with God on display. They're not not drawing men after Christ. They're drawing men after themselves. Take a stand for righteousness. Walk closely with Christ. And do not use your freedom for sin. But be willing to stand strong. Be courageous. Be full of the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to give you the words to speak.